good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're delighted you to be with us tonight. Tonight we have as our guest a man who kept the world laughing for 20 years, and considering the time in which he did that, that was a magnificent feat. Edgar Bergen is our special guest tonight with a later uh, special appearance by Charlie McCarthy. <laughs> 20 years, they had the most popular radio show that there was in North America. And it's a very great pleasure to welcome now to our program, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Edgar Bergen. Three of you. <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you with us tonight. You know, I, I only met you this afternoon, but your voice is so familiar because I listened to it for so long that it's like meeting an old friend. Well, I've been talking a long time, yes. I've been 20 years on radio, and uh, it was wonderful. It was Speaking nice. of talking, this is, pardon me, this is kind of a stock question, I guess, for ventriloquists particularly, but do ventriloquists really throw their voice? Uh, here we go. <laughs> Well, there are two schools of thought, a day school and a night school. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it, if you're working with a dummy right beside you... Uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll make it fairly intelligent. <laughs> Why, then there is not much need for throwing the voice because your ear is not accurate enough to detect whether it's there or there. there. It's your eye that tells you, like in a quartet singing on stage, which one is the tenor or the bass. And I say uh, uh, for that you don't need to, to do re true ventriloquism. But uh, there is more to it than that because I, uh, I like to fool dogs and if it's a good watchdog I've had them chasing upstairs you know looking for somebody upstairs or outside or in the basement and they go for it and they don't stop to see whether I'm moving my lips or not so uh, the <laughs> illusion the illusion works I remember we were, I was doing a benefit a Red Cross show in Monte Carlo and Princess Grace and Ranier they were of course the host and hostess for the thing Mervyn Leroy the director and Dick Powell was with me then about 10 years ago and after the show, we were invited for dinner at the Summer Palace, and we ate on the lawn there, and uh, she, she had her little black poodle with her, and she said, can you throw your voice? I said, well, I'll try. And I said, is your dog a good watchdog? She says, yes, he's pretty good. So I got into an argument with a man in the bushes there. It was dark in the evening, so he couldn't see anywhere. And that dog went for it in a big way. And finally, he looked around, and he, he realized he's been made sport of. <laughs> so then to top it, Prince Ranier came down with the Charlie McCarthy doll. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a ventriloquist? No, I don't know. I, I guess he was a fan. Yeah. Uh, aside, aside from being able to uh, project your voice like that, it, it is helpful, though, to have uh, something on which the attention of the audience can be focused. Yes, your, your imagination, imagination. Your imagination does quite a bit. And uh, I'll give you an illustration. Now uh, we have near ventriloquism, like Charlie's voice. It is. Uh, holding the lips fairly still. Some do better than I do, but I'm honest. I'll let you know who's doing the talking. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is a... Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, there. And if you, if it's distant voice, Joe lives downstairs. Joe, are you down there? Yeah, what do you want, Durgan? Yeah, he's way down there. <laughs> now, this is kind of amusing because uh, there is no character at all. What are you it's doing? Just I'm just making a black mark there. And uh, of course, you've seen this before, but it shows you how your imagination, you will believe she's talking and you'll also believe that, uh, that she has quite a face and some character. Her name is Ophelia. She's had a sad love life. It's not been without love, it's just been sad. Um, <laughs> uh, it, uh, so now if I give her this little scarf like so, we have Ophelia. Mm -hmm. There you have it, Jill. It saves a lot of money on dummies, doesn't it? Your, your name is Ophelia? That's right, yes. yes. Yes, you're not married? No, I'm not, no. Darn it. No, I see. <laughs> Are you thinking of marrying anyone? Just about anyone, yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> You were a little late getting here tonight. Well, there was a man following me. Oh, I see. And he was a slow walker. Oh, a slow walker. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that little supper we had. Yes, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. It's too spicy. Too spicy, as you. Lean too heavy on the sauce. I see, yes. 
gives me heartburn. Oh, I see you have heartburn now. Yeah, and gas. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> well, what about your love life? Has there in a romance? Well, a few years ago, I met a boy. How did you meet him? Well, I found him. Yeah. Under my bed. Yeah. <laughs> one night. Oh, one night. Huh? One night, yes. No, what a night. Yeah. Did you call the police? What for? Oh, I never mind. No, you... What was his name? I don't know. He didn't talk much. I see. I just called him Lover Boy. Lover Boy, I see. Well, what did he look like? Was he fair or was he dark? In the dark, he was pretty fair. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, when did you see Lover Boy last? Oh, it's been several years now. Yes, well, you can't trust those people you meet under your bed. No, you can't, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you want people of character, of substance. I'd like to meet some. Well, I've met some fine men in this town. I could introduce you here to Mr. Banks. What's he look like? He's sitting right there. Can I talk to him? Yes. Uh, good heavens, that's Lover Boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Could I ask you, if you that's, that's one of my very favorite characters of you. What are you doing? Uh, I am now a doctor. <clears throat> you're, do you, is there no end to your talent? Yeah. I, I just want to ask you if you'd bring out one of your favorite and very well-known characters for us. I'd, well, I, could, I could, would consider it, yes, yes. You know, the average person, you know, they know this as a stethoscope, you know, and that's common to call that. Of course, we in the medical profession, we speak of it as a doctor's listening thing, you see. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if, uh, uh, if I can... Oh, by the way, uh, I, as I say, I'm now not just a doctor, I'm a psychiatrist. And, uh, and uh, according to my books, my next patient is Napoleon. I don't believe it's the original one, because I've had three this week so far. <laughs> but uh, shall I go in? Would the... you please? Yes. I'd love to meet your patient. Thank you very much. We'll be back in just a very few minutes after this important message. Well, you wanted to see me, young man? Uh, no, sir, I didn't. I see. I was ordered to see you. Oh, I see. Yeah. I don't know why. You don't know why. Well, I'll tell you. When people have problems, have hang-ups, they like to talk it over with me. Oh, you're a bartender. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm a psychiatrist. Oh, you are, yes. And I'd like to know who are you? Well, I'm, uh, I'm Napoleon. Napoleon? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. One of the Bonaparte boys. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, I always wanted to ask you, Napoleon, what happened at Waterloo when you met Wellington? Well, he caught me off my guard. I see. Clobbered the heck out of me. Yeah. How could you let that happen? Well, I had just invented Napoleon Bandy. I see. And I auditioned one bottle too many. Yeah. Uh -huh. You were a little, uh, little tipsy. Oh, I was French fried. French fried, I know. Does the name Charlie McCarthy mean anything to you? No, I, uh, no, 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 no. I'm afraid I don't know the boy. You don't know him? I'm sure he's a fine boy. Well, he's in trouble with the police. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the same boy. Yeah. I thought you didn't know him. Well, well, it's, it's, uh, it's the same one that I don't know. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it seems that he threw a skunk in the school ventilating system. Yeah, 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 well, that'll do it. Yes, it did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when the police came to investigate, he stole their squad car. Yeah? Yeah. Now, what do you think of that? Well, nobody's perfect. No, of course no. You don't know him? No, no, I can't afford to. I see. I would like a little truth from you, young man. Well, you should have talked to me yesterday. Oh? Yeah, I was George Washington. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am trying to help you. Yeah, what do you think is wrong, Bimby Knocker? Well, I don't know what's wrong. You don't know? No, I don't. Uh -huh. I like you, Dr. James. Thank you. You're honest, dear. Stupid, but honest. Yes. <laughs> have you studied medicine, or is this a hobby with you? <laughs> I've studied for years. Yeah. At times I feel I know very little about it. Well, I saw you impressed me. Yes, I see you. For the past five years, I've specialized in psychiatry. Yeah. You see, we psychiatrists, we are interested in the brain. Yeah. And we divide the brain in three parts. Well, isn't that messy? Well, I mean, it. in our studies. Oh, in your studies? Yes. For the past two years, I have been working with the brain of a monkey. Good heavens, what happened to yours? No, no, no. <laughs> 
in the laboratory. Oh, the laboratory, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Yeah, well, I imagine that's it. Now, you see, it's the, it's the purpose of uh, we psychiatrists. We, we want to draw you out of yourself. Yeah. Well, can you poke me back in again? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I have to ask you a few questions, such as, tell me a little bit about yourself. What was, what was your family relationship? Or your relationship with your family? Yeah, give me the line straight. Yeah, all right, that's it. Yeah. Well, I was their son. Well, I know that. <laughs> That's a silly question. Well, why did you ask it? Yeah. What, what stands out in your memory, in your boyhood memory, as particularly bright? Well... Something that's rather that you remember and kind of proud of. I'd say offhand, uh, the Little Red Schoolhouse. The Little Red Schoolhouse. Uh -huh. Well, that's nice. Isn't that nice, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Was it really red? It was the day I set it on fire. Oh, I did. <laughs> I see, yeah, sure. Uh, are you rather uh, short-tempered? Well, no, but you're making headway. I see. <laughs> well, now, young man. Yeah. Yes. I think maybe we could save a little time by uh, taking a little walk. A little walk? Yeah. Where to? To the police station. The police station? Yeah. Well, why walk? I got their squad car. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I took the opportunity, since we knew that Edgar Bergen was going to be on our program today, to do a little bit of reading, and it's uh, an amazing fact that he invented the character of Charlie McCarthy in 1923, when he was in high school, which is an amazing fact, and the, uh, the character Charlie McCarthy has only been represented over the years by one uh, dummy, I guess, that Edgar Bergen really regards as being successful, and there have been many attempts made to copy him. Mm -hmm. But uh, the one that you are seeing tonight is the real Edgar Bergen and the real Charlie McCarthy, and here they are again. Or here he is again, Edgar Bergen. <laughs> it's amazing how you can bring a piece of wood to life. It's incredible. And how he can bring a livelihood to me. <laughs> yes, I think you, it's you it. You know, you're known by the company you keep, and I've kept company with a dummy, but it, it worked out <laughs> rather well. <laughs> this, this is another cliché question I'm sure you get very often, being a ventriloquist. How do you regard Charlie, that, that property? Is, is he uh, an alter ego, or is he a real thing to you? Well, I, um, I, um, I think of him as, as very much of a live an individual as a person. Of course, and when we write for him, we always say Charlie says or Mortimer says. And, uh, rehearsal for the shows, of course, we have to have him there. And um, I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I was reminded uh, when I do a picture without him, I work for less money than when I have <laughs> Charlie with this, uh, I'm rather proud of doing something without him, but uh, the salary cut hurts, but... Uh, what, is, what is your uh, personal relationship? You asked him. What, what is your relationship to him? Have you ever been accused of being his father? <laughs> well, I've been known for years as the father of Charlie McCarthy, and I'm, uh, now I'm known as the father of Candace Bergen. I do, can't seem to make it on my own, but... Uh, <laughs> and what hurts more than that is she thinks I'm kind of square. Yeah. She said if I took LSD, I'd probably see Lawrence Welk. Now, isn't that... <laughs> I imagine that you have to conduct yourself with a great deal more aplomb now that you're the father of such a beautiful star. I mean, you can't act like a teenager anymore. Well, no, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it's kind of foolish to try and act like a teenager if you're not. Uh, it's like there's no point in going out and trying to paint the town if you're out of paint. Uh, <laughs> and, and by 9.30, your bucket is dragging, so... <laughs> <laughs> now, I've Do you go to cocktail parties much anymore? I mean, to keep up that sort of end of the Hollywood life? That's one sport I'm pretty active in, yes. I, uh, I like cocktail parties. You know, everybody talks, nobody listens. It's me. You look across the room and you see olives bobbing up and down. It makes a nice picture of mass lubrication. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> better living through chemistry, you chemistry. <laughs> I have two recipes. I don't remember either one. So you don't have that one drink too many. What is it? Uh, uh, oh yes, one is. Uh, oh, as well, one is you should stop drinking when 
you, you start seeing double and feeling single. That's a good thing. <laughs> and the other one is when you start spilling things and not, and you catch yourself, so you get real dignified to cover up your condition. You know, I like, I like a dignified drunk. They're interesting. You know. So, you know, say, uh, how do you do? I'm quite sure, you know. Uh, so that's a sign. When, so when you start feeling sophisticated and can't pronounce it, you've had it. <laughs> We're going to take this time out for an important message. We'll be right back after this with Edgar Burke. We're talking to Edgar Bergen, and we didn't think it would be possible to get away without asking if we could have the chance to meet uh, Mortimer Snerd. Mortimer, <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I've been looking forward to it for years. I used to listen to your program all the time. Uh, and your guests, Charlie McCarthy and Edgar Bergen, these uh, guys. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank it's you. It's a real pleasure having thank you. Thank you. He's a nice fellow. Yeah. Who is he? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who he is. He just barged in here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> kind of feels he owns the place. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think we, we have a lovely audience here now. You see, we have some pretty girls out there. They all, yeah. And I think, don't do that. I, uh, yeah. You smile at the audience. <laughs> How about over here? <laughs> that ought to be enough, I think, so yeah. Uh, when when there are some attractive girls in the audience, you should try and and, uh, and you know be a little sexy for the girls. Oh no, 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 no. I'm not very sexy, you know. No, no, good looking maybe, but not sexy. Oh, hush up out there. Yeah. You don't have a girl, do you? No, gosh, no, no. No, I don't have a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, Bunch of smart Alex back there. Yeah, all right, all right. Sure. But there ain't one of them that can milk a cow. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mortimer, how many times have you been kissed? Oh. <laughs> you mean counting girls? Oh my God. Yeah, well, well, what else? Well, uh, that's what I say, what else? Well, Grandpa used to kiss me goodnight. Oh, he did? Yeah. Grandpa? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's no thrill in that. Oh, there ain't no. Well, I guess that's why he quit doing it. I'm back to show you. <laughs> I, yeah. Are you, uh, you live on the farm with Grandpa. Well, I know that. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah. You, you like it on the farm? Always something going on there. Yeah. Last week, the stork visited the barn. Oh, did your cow calf? No, but I'll tell you what did. Uh, my pig, uh, pig, oh, pig, yeah. <laughs> she had 13 babies. Oh, my goodness. She must be a proud mother. Well, she's a little embarrassed. She can only set places for 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a titter out of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the way it goes, yeah. She has to have two sittings, I imagine so, yes, yeah. Well, are you going to be a farmer when you grow up? No, no, I'm not, no. Oh, I'm gonna, I got a job next summer here. Yeah, 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 Grandpa got it for me. I'm gonna be a lifeguard. A lifeguard, yeah, yeah, that's the way it goes, yeah. Have you studied life-saving? Well, I had it as a Boy Scout, yeah. But do you know what to do? Well, if I don't, it's right there in the book. Well, I know. It should be in your head. Well, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Well, now, let me just rehearse you out. Let's say you're the lifeguard. Yeah, this is a beach right here. Oh, it is? Yeah. Out there is a lake. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And over there is a boy swimming out in the lake. Well, that's nice. Oh, I nearly fell off. <laughs> you want to watch that? Yeah, it's all right. Here. Yes, he's swimming out there. Oh, yes. And all of a sudden that boy says, help, help, I'm drowning. Well, uh, that's a shame. Yeah, well, of course it is. Well, what are you going to do about it? Me? You're the lifeguard. Oh, yeah. Well, let's talk it over. <laughs> yeah. How far out is he? Oh, say, 120 yards? Oh, nuts to that. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going. Where? Coffee break. You don't coffee break now. No, no. What does the book say? Well, the book says you're supposed to uh, uh, row out there in a boat. Well, row out there then. Yeah. Now, by the time you get out there, that poor boy has gone under. <laughs> Wasn't worth the trouble, was it? Yeah. 
You can't see them on the top, on the surface there, so what do you do? I'll roll out in a glass bottle boat. No, no, no. no. You'll dive in the water. I will? Yes. And you'll, die, and you'll get that boy out, and then you'll bring him ashore. Yeah. And then you'll give him what? Artificial? Yeah. Suffocation? No. <laughs> Perspiration? No, yeah. What are you going to do for that boy? Oh, is he? I thought, is, is he dead yet? No, no, no. <laughs> This is the dumbest conversation I've ever been mixed up in. Oh, you notice it too? Yes, yes. <laughs> How can you be so stupid? Well, I tell you, I got a fellow helping me. I see. <laughs> see you all next week, same time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>